Now, from the studios of Into Tomorrow in Miami, this is ITTV. Hey there, ITTV viewers. Nice to see you all again. While I'm still conquering a nasty cold, I'm Dave Graveline. Special thanks to Rob, Chris, and the team for holding down the fort while I was out. And thank you for watching. Something we love about electronics is how most of them not only keep adding features and shrinking in price, but they also keep shrinking in size. Yet, they still work. Rob's been playing with a tiny device that resembles the appearance of a pencil eraser. Yet it functions as a computer mouse. Hmm, take a look. Thanks, Dave. Logitech is redefining the size of the computer mouse with one of their latest creations, the Cube. After playing with it for a few days, we love it. The Cube does double duty. It functions as a regular mouse, but also works as a presenter. You have both left click and right click. For the left click as we know it, you simply click on the top edge. For the standard right click, you click in the middle of the top side. You'll notice there's no scroll wheel. However, by swiping your finger up and down on the top, it will scroll through pages and windows. It reminds me of the way Apple's Magic Mouse scrolls. To use the presenter mode, you raise it up in the air like you do with the TV remote. By clicking on it, you'll advance your slide. To go back to previous slides, just flip it over and click. The Logitech Cube is very portable. You can take it on the go by slipping it in your pocket or laptop bag. This is great for mobile warriors, especially for those who carry ultra-slim laptops. The Cube works on a rechargeable battery. It comes with a USB cable you can plug into your computer to charge it. It's got a power button you can easily use to turn it off or on, so you can save some of its battery power that way. Battery life will depend on how much you use it. It has a battery indicator that will warn you when it's time to charge. The Logitech Cube connects to your laptop or computer wirelessly with a unifying receiver, this small USB adapter. You can get a range of up to about 82 feet or 25 meters. The Cube is currently available for just under 70 bucks in black or white. We'll have more info for you and a link at intotomorrow.com. Thank you for watching. Back to you, Dave. Thanks, Rob. I wonder how much smaller a computer mouse can get. Someone's probably working on one-upping Logitech's Cube already. Anyway, what do you think about it? Is it too small? Be sure to voice your opinions in the comments section. Or better yet, call our radio show to participate and win. 1-800-899-INTO. That's 1-800-899-4686 anytime, 24-7. Shopping for tech? Instead of relying on a salesperson, Newegg.com relies on you, their community of over 16 million technology experts, to give honest, knowledgeable advice on technology they sell. So the next time you're shopping for a new laptop or HDTV, don't take advice from just anyone. Take it from a geek at Newegg.com. Our favorite tech historian, Chris Graveline, joins us next with some important technological events from the past. We're on a whole bunch of FM stations these days. Do you know when the first FM went on the air? Oh, Chris just might tell you. This week in 1873, E. Remington and Sons of Ilion, New York, began manufacturing the first practical typewriter. The strong as steel, heavy black clunkers became instant fixtures in offices across the country. In 1885, the American Telephone and Telegraph Company, or AT&T, was incorporated in the state of New York. This week in 1941, FM radio began in the U.S. when station W47NV in Nashville, Tennessee started operations. W47NV was the first commercial FM radio station to receive a license, some 20 years after its AM radio counterpart, KDKA, in Pittsburgh. In 1954 this week, the first color television sets using the NTSC standard were offered for sale to the general public. And this week in 1995, Yahoo! was incorporated. A little bit of useless trivia, the word Yahoo! is an acronym for yet another hierarchical officious oracle. Right. That's our look back at This Week in Tech History. Thank you, Chris. Oh, this just in. We're about to award another really cool prize to a random liker. If you already have hit like on our Facebook page, then you're already entered. If not, be sure to visit facebook.com slash into tomorrow and hit that like button. Do it quickly. You may just very well be the next big winner. 
Our youngest tech reporter is back. She joined us at the recent Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, where she was a featured speaker again this year. But she also visited many interesting exhibits, including one where she found some fun robots. Caitlin? It's Caitlin Gatorhood, your Kids Tech Reporter. I'm here at the Tozy booth with Trey. So, one of my favorite products here at CES this year was the M-Robo they have and the Sketch Robot. So, can you tell me about the Robo? Mm -hmm. Sure, I'd love to. Well, the M-Robo, it is a trans um, portable speaker that can transform into a robot with the head, the arm, the legs. And once the music starts, it will start dancing to the music. And the Sketch Robot? Actually, it's called Sket Robo. So Sket Robo is a drawing robot. Um, right now, because it's only a prototype, it can only draw from the memory. So we upload pictures into its memory and it draws the study pictures. But the finished product will have a camera that can capture your image, your portrait, and draw it with stunning details. And we're hoping to get the M Robo released both the Emrobo and the Sketch will be released later this year, around September. And the retail price for Emrobo will be 199 US dollars, and for Sketch Robo would be 50, around 50 US dollars. Kids can have fun, you know, drawing with the Sketch Robo as well. Like um, he can draw parts of the pictures, and kids can complete it, or kids can color the, the picture that he draw. So it's kind of like they have their own art teacher with, with them all the time. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Thank you, Trang, for joining us. We'll have more at kidstech.tv. Bye. It's my pleasure. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Caitlin. Those robots are really neat. The Sket Robo impressed me and the team, so we gave it a Dave's Top 10 Award at CES. Good stuff. Check it out at intotomorrow.com. Want to stay on top of the latest news in the tech world and, of course, Into Tomorrow? Subscribe to our free once-a-week tech newsletter. Our subscribers are typically the first to know about special giveaways, too. So don't be left out. Sign up at intotomorrow.com. Just enter your email in that red box. Then click the confirm link that you'll get in your subsequent email. We'll visit your inbox soon. Well, that wraps it up for this week's ITTV show. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our videos. Thanks for watching. Be sure to catch our three-hour weekly radio show as well. I'm Dave Graveline. We'll see you soon. Hey there, ITTV view. Um, did I say too many T's? <laughs> Thanks, Caitlin. Those robots are... Thanks, Caitlin. Those robots...